welcome to Transient World 2. Uh, it's a new little video series I've been wanting to do for uh, a couple weeks now. Just I keep getting wrapped up in other things and getting sidetracked and haven't been able to do it. But uh, this is not going to be one of my typical, oh, let's let's talk mad smack about Transient World 2. And instead, let's actually play through it. Let's actually, you know, have, try and have some fun here. So in this video series, which is going to be... Uh, a weekly video series. I'm actually going to be just recording, like, a bunch of episodes at one go and then just releasing them over time because, you know, you have to edit and everything. Uh, they're going to be about 15 minute long episodes. And we're just going to be playing through the Journeys mode in Train Sim World 2. And I'm starting out with the CSX routes. And I've actually skipped the three, like, first ones. There's, like, basically three tutorials. And then you have three very easy uh, little switch jobs that you start out with. So the first one is going to be Y101. I have to start my stopwatch. I forgot to start my stopwatch. And uh, let's get rolling on episode one here of this. So uh, let's see. Morning delivery. Why uh, train? Why one zero one? It's nine oh five in the morning. Take the yard power over to the yard and pull together the new inbound cars. Then take the cut over to the bowl for for classification. Fifteen minutes. So we could we should just wind up one episode right here. Uh, we got to GP38-2 YN2, so let's begin, and immediately run into a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right, we have a problem. I play with a rail driver, and the YN2, which is the exact same locomotive. Can I, why wouldn't it let me... I know there's a button to do it. Yeah, I gotta use the keyboard control. The YN2 and the YN3 locomotives are the same locomotive, but the rail driver doesn't work on the YN2s. They're the same locomotive. Ah, that's just me, me griping about things. All right. Uh, ditch lights. Ditches. We don't need the ditch lights on. So we're going to go about a mile and a half and couple up to some cars. Uh, do, 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 do. Front headlight on. Medium. I'm moving it to the position one. There we go. I... Oh, I gotta put the reverser in. I'm like, why well, won't the reverser go? I'm just gonna click it forward. Alright. Two short toots. I really don't... Actually, uh, completely apply the independent brake. Let's go into map view, because we have to make sure that all these switches are lined up, and I'm not gonna get out... For the most part, I'm gonna be doing this more um you know, more in a simulation sense you know full full my immersion where I can but just because for whatever reason the scenario doesn't start you out with the switches lined up to go down the track you need to go down I'm just gonna quickly get all these switches lined up We now lined into the track that we need to go down. This is independent. Okay, I'm hitting the button to make the throttle go forward, and it's, oh, it's, it's it's reversed. I'm so used to other train simulators like the the layout of the keyboard controls, and then Train Sim World 2 like takes that that keyboard control layout that almost every other train simulator has in common, and says, nah. Alright, so for this move, uh, we've released the independent brake, we release the train brake. I set that to freight. Little steps, I forget. I, I really do like that we have all these little knobs and all these different functionalities, and then we have a non-functioning radio. And we're missing our flow gauge right here. And we don't have a speedometer. And you're like, but that's a speedometer. Yeah, that's a digital one. We, we, these locomotives have big analog speedometers right here. But I do like that we can, you know, drop the sun visors and stuff. And we can open the windows. There's a lot of things that I actually, you know, for as much, much crap that I talk about 
about Train Sim World. There's a lot of things that I do like. I like the details, and I do think the game looks really good. I just wish it performed better. Of course, we are getting... What am I getting? Like, I'm recording at 30 FPS, and the game's running at almost 60, 55 FPS, and I've got my graphics maxed out. So... Like, I've got my graphics settings in-game at, like... With the exception of Blur, which... Whatever person in the video game industry decided that putting motion blur into a video game was a good idea is a terrible, terrible person. So that switch flag just changed from red to green as we approached it. Like it was lined in the right direction and then it changed. The colors, like the lighting just throws the colors off a little bit. And I'm also running with almost all of the HUD turned off. Um... Or was it shift one? I don't know. There's like, there's someone I asked about it, but like the HUD down here, I turn that off. I don't, I don't need to see my speedometer. I don't need to see my brake valve pressures. I can read these gauges. And I turn action points off because action points make no sense to me whatsoever. There's also some tasks we're about to do, and I'm like, that doesn't make much sense, but... Again, you know, part of the part of the series is going to be just playing through the game and, and, and... Talking just general railroad operations. I, I don't claim to be an actual, you know... I don't claim to work for an actual railroad or anything like that. But I've been doing, you know, operations, switching and stuff for years. You know, trying to get my model trains to operate and in, in, in industry, you know, interface with industries the same the same way that the real railroads do in the most prototypical manner possible. So when we actually start playing, you know, games like Run 8 and Trains, they, I try to do those same things. And I've also, I've always had a, a difficult time with for Train Sim World, and it just not really having that, that level of detail in the operations. It's great that they have the level of detail in the locomotives and the graphics and everything look pretty damn good, except for the draw distance on the trees is a mile. Um, like, I can see the ground. It shouldn't, there should be trees over that hill, even if it's like low-poly trees. There should be low-poly trees over that hill, whatever. Uh, we got a couple of those cars way down there. All right, we're still going. We're still going pretty good here. Are those just blacked out gauges, or are they like not load right? Those gauges, like the textures on those gauges, didn't load right. Nice. They should be lit up, and they're not. Oh, you know what else I can turn on? My front number boards. Eh, we don't need the rear ones. Little things that I always forget to do. I even forget to do it in run eight. Even the speed at 15, and I'm just, we're, I haven't had the power on. I haven't really touched the brakes. Just letting the train coast. There, there was a discussion, though, and I, I chimed in on it on the uh, official Dovetail Games forums about VR support. It's like, I, 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 I I'm awesome. I, I'm like 100% in favor of VR. In train simulators, but I also don't like Derail Valley. <laughs> like I, it just, it, I have a hard time clicking with it. So we got another train coming in right there. No way of knowing what train that is. Ooh, that has headlights on. And we're going under the hump yard. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of independent brake. And if you hear jets in the background, I live near an Air Force base, and I think they're doing a lot of training today. And they keep flying overhead.
Like I live like when when they when they take off and come landing on one of the, the runways, they fly right overhead. It's powering it up this bit of a hill coming out. I really do like, and I talked about this in a previous video, that, that, that Dovetail Games finally introduced the rail driver support after, what, like 15, 17 years of them developing train simulators? Uh, they finally introduced rail driver support to one of their sims, and then it only half works. <laughs> it only half works, and that bums me out. Like, it... It, it properly works but only with half the locomotive. So that's what I mean by it, half works. So I'm sitting here like, I have my hands on my rail driver. I'm like, levers, buttons, knobs, switches that don't do anything. And yet, and yet it does work with this because I have the speedometer. The, the speedometer gauge on the locomotive is, or on the rail driver is syncing up. So the game is talking to the rail driver constantly. It's just the rail driver, for whatever reason, can't talk to this particular locomotive. It can talk to a different one with a different paint job. But let's get a little outside view. And what is it? Eight? Yeah, eight's the free camera. I'm going to go all the way down here to the receiving tracks, which are completely empty. Which is either a really good sign or a really bad sign. And we got a couple to just these like six cars. For what? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars. Yeah, eight cars. Realistically, you know, if this were a, a more realistic simulation, a more realistic environment, um, there'd be a lot more more traffic and, and not more train cars sitting in these tracks. And we wouldn't be coming down this track in this direction. We'd be coming down at the other direction, pushing these cars up over that hump yard that we went through. Because this is actually the receiving tracks. So trains coming into Cumberland Yard, where we're at, go over the hump yard and they would be sorted you know based on their the next destination or whatever just like you'd see in say well the real world run eight trains both of those have functioning you know, all three of those have functioning hump yards uh eh, but you know we're not shoving them over we have to grab these cars and then go work and do all of our flat switching in the bowl which you never do flat switching in the bowl yard or bowl tracks. Bowl tracks are cars come out of the hump and they go in. The job said it was supposed to take 15 minutes. I've been doing track speed and it's been about 15 minutes. So this episode might, this job might be split across two episodes. I'm just watching my stopwatch and watching my recording time. I didn't want to click that. I keep wanting to hit W and S to move faster or slower, to speed up or slow down. And it's it's A and D on the keyboard to, to work the throttle. And that's just, that's unintuitive to me. That's backwards. A and D should be, should be my reverser. I think I can, I think I can change that. I might actually, between this video and then this episode and the next episode, see if I can't change that. I think I can go in the settings and do it. I've never really played with the settings too much. And a lot of people are like, well, just play with an Xbox controller, because you have one, and you can do that. Like, yeah, but I also have a rail driver, and I could be using the rail driver instead, but I can't, because the game only has it for half the locomotives. All right, so we're going to start getting close to the cars here. We're going to cut our speed down to about five miles an hour. A little bit of independent brake. Nice. And slow. Slow. 
and we made a joint. Go ahead and apply automatic brake. I'm just using keyboard controls. I know I could be clicking and dragging these, but I don't like clicking and dragging. All right, now we have to reverse a full mile. Let's actually do some click and drag. Click, drag, release the independent. Wait for my flow. Oh, I don't have a flow gauge. So I just gotta assume that it's good. Oh, we got another train rolling right there. And while we're reversing the train, I'm just going to use the map tool to make sure that we are lined up for all the appropriate tracks. I don't know why they have me taking that zigzag route, but that's the route they want me to take. Throw that switch, throw that switch. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. There's an oil train rolling by. Yeah, this first episode is going to run a little long because I want to finish this job before we, uh, in this first episode. And then, and then the second episode, which I'm going to record right after this, <coughs> we'll uh, dive into the next job. And that one I think will be split. But I, I, and I've already done some of these jobs. I'm just kind of going back and replaying them. I've only done like four or five of them before I said you know what I should make a I should make a series out of this I should I should do some recording of some sort um, and uh, so I've already powered through a couple episodes or a couple bits before deciding to do this and this isn't, this isn't, me doing this doesn't say, mean that, oh, you're no longer going to be live streaming on Fridays. No, I'm going to, I'm going to keep live streaming on Fridays, and then Wednesdays is going to be our iRacing, and, um, Fridays will be, Fridays will be running live stream, uh, Wednesdays will be iRacing, and I'll probably be recording these, like, on Tuesdays, or even Monday nights, like, late Monday night, um, once I finish all the CSX, journeys we'll probably jump to one of the other routes I don't see myself really throwing much money at this sim though I'm, I don't I don't see myself buying more routes anytime soon uh, even if they're on sale I, I just I can't really justify it at the moment but well, you know, we'll see we'll see I might buy the the, the, the west coast route that they have uh, just because, why not? Uh, I am thinking maybe of also doing something similar with Run 8. Maybe running a local in Run 8. And just recording it and doing the same kind of thing. And making it like a full, like, you know, s short series. But the only problem is with, with, with that is locals in Run 8 take multiple hours. So I would actually have to dedicate like a full day to one of those locals. Whereas this series, I can dedicate an hour a day. Just record an hour for an hour, and that's if I do 15-minute episodes, record for an hour, and that's four episodes right there. So I can easily miss a day if I have to. I definitely want to have like a little backlog and just make it a, cons make it a constant, you know, constant scheduled thing that pops up so it's like hey new video consistently and we are running a little long on this episode but it's the first episode first episodes always run long first and very last episodes <laughs> we're at a little over speed we're doing about 16 miles an hour again I, I you know I know a lot of people um, a lot of people play tra train simulators and they, they play in this view. They play in the outside view because oh, I want to see everything going on, which, you know, no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I prefer being in more of a, 
a realistic, you know, in cab view. And because we, you know, even though I do have train brakes and I do have cars, I'm only using the independent brake to slow this thing down. They're slowing down though. The horn should be so much louder though. That horn is so quiet. Also, I don't know why my rear ditch lights are coming on. I have the ditch light switch turned off. I do love the detail though. Like, there's grass, there's gravel. Like, even when you're walking, the ground crunches under you. That sounds nice. Like, there's little things that that definitely make this feel very feel pretty good. Like, it looks really good. It just it doesn't. The world doesn't feel alive. There's not enough other rail traffic out there. There's AI trains that roll by, but this yard should be full. Alright, we're gonna go to that next spot. Which looks like all of our tracks are lined. Like, like there should be a train right now going over this hump, and cars should be rolling down, being sorted into these bowl tracks. And, and the, the bowl yard, you know, the bowl yard here, hump yard, should be full. And it's not, and that really, that's really disappointing. That's like one of my big gripes. And I'm just going to be vocal about the entire time I play this, is this world doesn't feel as alive as it could be. But it does look really nice. Like The lighting is great. I love the reflection of the sun off of the rails. The sound of the train rolling down the track is really nice, too. That clunk 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 and the screeching of the, the, uh, of the rails as the weight of the train actually goes on because when you know locomotives are really really heavy you can citation required I know but they're really heavy and you can you can actually hear when a train is coming down the tracks the rails creak and moan from the weight so we're gonna drive almost a full mile down there You know, but again, with the sound, you know, they, the, the rails creak, creak and moan, and the ties warp, and some of the wheels have flat spots that go bump, 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 bump down the track. Not a lot of train simulators do that audio. They don't do the creaking rails. They don't do the screeching, the flanges hitting. Run 8 does the, the flanges and does make some audio, but then it still sounds really good. But, uh,. I think I think Train Sim World does it just a little bit better. Except for the horn. That is a pathetic sounding horn. Like that sounds like the train's a mile away from me. And my head is right outside the window. I should be, you know unless they simulate me having earplugs in, but then if I've got earplugs in, if my if my avatar has earplugs in, I wouldn't be able to hear all the other noise going on as clearly as I, I can. And I think we're going to get to the stop point here, and that's where I'm going to stop this episode, because it's already been 22 minutes, and I'm like, oh, no, I only wanted to do a 15-minute episode, but, oh, well, I could finish this task. It said it's only going to take 15 minutes. It took more than 15 minutes. So you'll have to wait until next week. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release episode one and two, like, back to back, within a few hours of each other. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put a link in the description below, and I'm, I'm doing hand motions because I'm so used to live streaming and having my webcam on, and I don't have my webcam on. I might, I might future episodes do that. But, uh, link in the description below where you can check out my Run 8 live streams on Friday nights. And like I said, you know, I'm going to try and make this a weekly series. So if you're watching it and you're like, oh, wow, you're actually playing something that isn't Run 8. And you're not just absolutely destroying Train Sim World and talking just mad shit. Okay, we can we can get behind that. Then, you know, feel free. If you want to learn more about operations, you know, we're going to 
as we start doing some more switching and some of these other tasks that we have to do, we'll, we'll be diving more into it. Yeah, I'm gonna, as soon as we get to the stop point, um, I'm as well gonna call it the end of this first episode. I know that we're almost done with this task, but I also, like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to make these videos short because a 15 minute video is easier to, to consume and digest than a two hour long pre-recorded live, or about two hour long, like previously live live stream. So it's easier for me to play Train Sim World and record a 15 minute video than it is for me to do a two hour live stream. The, the, the cravat there, the back, the, 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 the trade off there is a live stream. I can have an audience and have a live feedback we have a direct back and forth and here it's me and me just talking and you guys enjoying the train rolling and i'm just talking because i'm in i'm in a live stream brain mode i love the shadows rolling across things and yes yes i have i just made a really quick and dirty run eight box car paint scheme because why not I got tired of seeing nothing but CSX, everything else. I think I was talking about something and then I got distracted. Um... Forty yards. I think I was talking. Oh, I was talking about someone posted a. I was talking about VR for stuff. Post on, post on the trains and World Discord or Discord forums about uh, about VR and it's just like some of the comments were just like people who don't know what they're talking about. Why can't I get the reverser to go to forward? Reverser, reverse. No, I want to close the window. No, I want in here. Ah, right, we're gonna we're gonna call it here on this episode. Catch you guys next week when we finish up this task and we start the next bit. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that other random ass bowl malarkey stuff. Catch you guys in the next one.